Lessons from a Cussing Cat, Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long belong. And as always, we want to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is out of uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14, the Apostle Paul writing, encouraging the Philippians to... Be careful about their communication. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. And it would go on to say that you might be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in this world. I have a cat that is, I call it a cussing cat. His name is Jiggy. He's a great big old gray tomcat. He's been neutered. Um, But he is... uh, he yells and cusses in cat language. I'm certain it's cussing. The tone has to be that. Whenever he's upset or displeased about something, he will uh, prowl the entirety of the house, yelling at the top of his cat lungs about his grievance, whatever that grievance is. The particular thing that he becomes grieved about is that his food bowl is half empty. Not empty, half empty. And he will pick very inappropriate times to tell us it's empty. Like at four o'clock in the morning, he'll go through the house yelling and cursing and waking people up. And it's a habit with him, and he does it all the time. And so now I'm beginning to force him to be an outside cat at night to preserve our ability to be able to sleep at night. So let's think through this problem of developing the habit of complaining because I think it brought about an end he didn't have in mind. And I think in our lives, it brings about an end that maybe we don't have in mind. This feline friend's incessant complaining about his dinner bowl not being filled to the brim, even when it's not empty, reminds us how we often behave in our own life. Just like the cat who disrupts the household's sleep at unearthly hours, we too can fall into the trap of focusing on what we lack rather than being grateful for what we already have. The Bible warns us against this behavior in Philippians, urging us to do all things without murmuring and disputing. When we constantly complain, we not only rob ourselves of joy and contentment, but also strain our relationships with others. Just as the cat's habit of complaining has led to him being moved outside, our own complaining spirit can cost us dearly, can push us away from those closest to us and hinder our personal growth. We must recognize that true happiness and a life of, cons- of constant complaint don't, cannot coexist. Take a moment to reflect on the genuinely happy people in your life. You'll likely find that none of them are chronic complainers. They choose to focus on the blessings they have rather than dwelling on what they lack. As Christians, we are called to cultivate a spirit of gratitude and contentment. When we shift our perspective from what we don't have to what God has already provided, we open the door to true joy and peace. Let us learn from the cat's mistakes and try strive to break free from the habit of complaining. Instead, let's fill our hearts with thanksgiving and trust in God's provision. By doing so, we can experience the abundant life that Christ has provided and promised us. Mighty Father God, I pray that you would help us to learn to control our tongue, to watch our words, to set a guard over our mouths, that we might not complain ourselves out of the very situations that are the biggest blessings in our lives. Forgive us, God, for focusing on our lack rather than the provision that you've brought to us. Help us, God, to be people who are thankful, grateful um, people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you.